Hi, this is your host Sapna Bhartia, and today we have with us Brian Bellendorf, General Manager of Open SSF at the Linux Foundation, and Michael Escoveta, Principal Security PM Manager at Microsoft. Michael, Brian, it's great to have you both on the show. Great to be here. Thanks. Great to be here. And today we are going to talk about Alpha Omega project. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it's kind of created to uh, one of the biggest challenges, which is sub software supply chain security. Uh, I would talk about the project, but before I go there, because you know there was a White House meet, meet, meeting recently last year, there was an executive order also regarding S bombs. So there's a lot of awareness going on there, especially from the you know public sector. But I want to understand from both of you folks is that. In reality, in the industry, how much awareness, how many people are actually aware of the software security problem itself that, you know, then you're like, hey, no, let's help these folks. If they don't even know, uh, then it's like first educate them what it is. Yeah, I'll jump in. I mean, it seems like every six months there's yet another privacy breach, yet another um, hack, yet another uh, uh, defect that causes all of us in the industry to go, well, now they'll take it seriously, right? <laughs> now, now they'll really understand the, the, the stakes that are that are involved in this. Um, and the most recent of those, of course, was Log4j, uh, which, you know, I, I, look, the Log4j developers, the Apache Software Foundation are professionals. They were building things to the best of their abilities, but we're all human. We all have bugs in our code. Uh, uh, the best developers, Linus Torvalds, uh, Vitalik Buterin, I don't know who you are or care who you are. Uh, uh, you've got bugs in your code at, uh, at some point. Um, and what we need to do as an as a open source uh, software ecosystem is get really uh, much better at uh, finding those bugs, at fixing those bugs, and then asking ourselves, you know, in the software supply chain, uh, uh, where are there certain assumptions that we've made because open source came out of a relatively high trust environment, you know, where you could get to know the developers behind all the packages you depend upon or behind that operating system you prefer to build on top of. How do we move from that high trust environment to what is kind of a, a hostile, low trust or zero trust kind of environment um, where, you know, you have to think about each of the points in that supply chain from your IDE to the way that you pick your dependencies that you're going to use. Uh, to the way that you package it and ship it and send it out and ask yourself, wh where are those going to be attacked, right? And, and then the inverse of that is if you're running an open source project, what should you be doing to help reassure your end users that uh, you're taking kind of all the kind of, you know, baseline precautions and baseline uh, uh, actions, practices that help you know, not only uh, uh, reduce the likelihood of uh, a bug like log4j from happening in your code, but also help your end users when such a bug is found uh, update more frequently, right? So there's lots of things going on at the Open Source Security Foundation uh, targeted at this. And in fact, in October, we raised uh, uh, about $11 million inclusive of the 5 million for Alpha Omega uh, to focus on this problem. And we've got a whole bunch of great organizations that have joined and, and committed real capital to make this happen. And then a lot of our impact is in everything from education to best practices guides to, and, the, and, the, and the badging to all these different efforts. And uh, on Tuesday morning, we announced the Alpha Omega project, which we'll talk about in just a bit. Uh, but all of this is really resonating with a, a community, uh, with an industry that is recognizing there's a whole lot that we can't take for granted anymore. And even government as one of the largest users of open source software and now starting to create open source software, realize that they have a role to play in this as a peer to industry, but also as the, or, the, 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 the kind of organization that we uh, trust to, to worry about critical infrastructure and software, and especially open source software has become critical infrastructure. Michael, I want to hear your insight because first of all, Microsoft does a lot of work in security space as well. You folks are focusing a lot. Uh, and you also work with actually, you know, users uh, all the way to Azure or independent, you know, so to talk about, you know, what what have you seen in this space? I think I think the biggest thing that, I, that I've seen, I, I agree with everything that, that Brian said, um, is that the, the amount of open source that's being used today is, is much greater than it was 10 years ago and, and 15 years ago. So if you look at a typical a typical application is mostly made of open source. And this goes through for the largest enterprise applications to the smallest, you know, mom and pop shop, um, you know, business running tools. So, you know, when you look at it, you know, open source is the foundation of technology today. Um, and it's uh, where, you know, so in some ways the stakes are higher because a, single, a, a critical vulnerability in just one component could affect thousands of, of organizations, countries. Um, so, so it is a, uh, it, it could not be more important. Uh, and I'm very optimistic that um, the current focus 
um, that, that we're now seeing on it is going to pay off in terms of we we're, were able to move the needle on it. Thanks for sharing those nice. Now let's talk about the Alpha Omega project. Uh, let's talk about, you know, of course, brand new, touched upon it briefly, but I want to also understand, you know, what are the discussions that happened? How Microsoft, Google, and Linux Foundation, you know, they're like, hey, no, let's do something about this problem. A lot of it started with a white paper that, that Michael initially authored and uh, led a kind of a process through many of our OpenSSF uh, members and peers through iterating on. Um, Michael, why don't you talk about the, the drivers behind that, and then I'll, I'll add some flavor on top. Sure. So part of my role at Microsoft, um, for, I, I lead an open source security team, and part of our, our, our job is to look at critical pieces of open source that we use and determine if they're, if they're safe or not. And this goes beyond are there known public, you know, are there publicly known vulnerabilities to, you know, how can, how can you, you know, use them in a safe manner? Uh, have they been looked at? Are they still being maintained? Things like that. But as we were doing this and as we were doing more, more of them, we realized that other organizations were probably doing similar efforts, or at least aspirationally, they were doing, they, they wanted to do similar, similar things. And we didn't think it was efficient or, or, or even effective for have, to have every organization reviewing the same open source projects. So wouldn't it be neat if we could pool our resources to do n times as many um, uh, or n times as much work uh, across by not uh, by choosing to not compete on the security of open source? It, it benefits no one for there to be a critical vulnerability in a, in a piece of open source. So we started this conversation with Google a few years ago. It, it ultimately, um, you know, was kind of reborn again um, this past summer uh, through, you know, through and with OpenSSF um, uh, to the point that, you know, we're ready to, um, to, to move on this together as an industry and agree to, um, to, to pull our resources and, and, and do this together. Yeah, and, and all that, you know, the part of the thrust of Alpha Omega is to recognize that, you know, every viable open source project is different. Uh, it's different in how it runs its CI, CD, uh, how it approves, you know, uh, pull requests and what decisions it makes when it uh, uh, decides, you know, uh, the balance between paying off technical debt and updating dependencies and adding new features. Uh, and, and it was important to try to figure out a systematic approach to um, addressing uh, what is really the both ends of a spectrum of projects, the, the alpha projects, the ones that are you know, the most widely used, the ones that are uh, busiest, right, uh, and the ones that are most critical, perhaps, to critical infrastructure, but then the very long tail of projects that get included in, in, in so many different software stacks out there and kind of get forgotten about from time to time, more the, the color.js uh, types than the log4j types, for example. And, and addressing them requires some different techniques um, that get, kind of meet in the middle, on the alpha side, you know, we plan to really engage uh, uh, with humans, <laughs> uh, with the maintainer community and the and the and the and the broader community around a, a, a couple of uh, chosen software initiatives that are at that uh, upper end to try to say where could we be helpful in uh, the kinds of processes and, and and practices that would improve your security posture. Right, take a very open-minded approach, uh, point to things going on at OpenSSF, but potentially other places that'd be helpful. And if there's a need to to cut a check to help with with a, a code review here or uh, uh, some other kind of regular scanning there, you know, happy to, to do that to help prove the value of the stakeholders in that community pooling funds to, to make security an ongoing process, right? Uh, at the Omega end, which is that long tail, the, the top 10,000, which even that is a subset of the millions of repositories on GitHub, for instance, um, there the question is, can we use automated tooling to try to systematically look for new kinds of vulnerabilities? You know, each time there is a, a problem that pops up, like a log4j, you know, how do we systematically query, uh, you know, is that, is there a similar kind of functionality or similar kind of weakness across a larger range of open source projects, right? Um, so, so think of like the first part is kind of the security equivalent of the Software Freedom Law Center, where, you know, uh, we hope to work with projects to help them, you know, to, uh, uh, rather than on legal issues, on security issues. And then uh, uh, the Omega end of that looking a little bit more like an open source version of Project Zero, which is how do we systematically go and find new vulnerabilities and then work with the maintainers 
uh, to get them fixed, or or even if they just look like weaknesses, you know, uh, try to get them them updated. That's the big picture for Alpha Omega, and it's and it's high touch. And the five million that we've raised uh, from Google and Microsoft is really just seed funding to get this started. Uh, thanks for answering a lot of questions that I was going to ask there. So I appreciate that. Uh, you talked about the human aspect and the tech aspect, and there are two things I want to talk about. Human also sometimes uh, leads to cultural problem. I'm sure Michael is very much aware of that. Uh, it leads leads a lot of you know mindset changes, culture. We do talk about DevSecOps, but sometimes it looks like more of a preaching than practicing. So how do you actually you know really want to address that? I will also talk about the respect, but let's just start to talk about the cultural aspect. How do you want to change the mindset of people, how they should look at security? I think that cult culture, culture wins, C culture is king. So the way that we're approaching both Alpha and Omega is to meet projects where they are. We, we are humbled in the way that in, in that, you know, industry writ large has taken a dependence on uh, on, uh, on open source in, in, in many, many ways. And some of these range from, you know, projects that are sponsored by, by, a, by a large company through passion projects, single developer. And, you know, we, we don't look at it as, you know, uh, industry telling open source that they're bad and they're insecure and they need to do this stuff because, you know, we need to make money off of them or, or anything like that. There's really coming from a place where we want to, we, we want to help. But I think, What's changed is that about Alpha Omega is that we're showing up with with money and people, not with reports or dashboard or just dashboards or or, or things just pointing out flaws. So in the, in the instance of of even Omega, where you know Omega's primary um, uh, focus is going to be on critical vulnerabilities, when we find a critical vulnerability, we're not just going to you know ship a report out to the maintainer and say you know. In, in 90 days, this goes live. You know, we, we make this public or, or, or things like that. We, it, there's going to be a back and forth. So, so we're prepared for that, that kind of, um, that deeper engagement. We will be writing code to help them. If they need a patch, we will, we will contribute it. Um, on the alpha side, even more so where, because alpha is a much smaller number of projects, we'll be able to go deeper and, and establish long-term relationships with these projects. Um, what kind of collaboration or you know for the engagement we can expect from companies who can traditionally be competitors in the market, but you know with open source we all work you know as collaborators as well. The conversation that I've had with with um, Michael Windsor from from Google uh, and, and and others, we we don't want to compete on the security of open source. Period. So it's to, in everybody's best interest that. Um, that open source is more secure. We hope that other large organizations and, and small uh, feel the same way and, and are uh, willing to join us in this in this endeavor. Um, we, we don't think that anybody uh, anybody anyone benefits from from the current state. You know, at, at the Open SSF, we've pulled together an amazing constituency of about sixty different companies uh, who are uh, uh, all interested in the same topic. How do we improve foundationally? the security of the software that we all collectively uh, benefit from. Uh, and of course, the rest of the world will benefit from, from the investments that they've made. And it really is like all the leaders, not just of like the Silicon Valley, quote unquote, tech, kind of tech circle, but uh, uh, we've got uh, systems integrators in there. Uh, we've got uh, Wall Street, who are major consumers of open source software now actually starting to produce a lot of their own open source as well. Um, uh, and, and, you know, we've been building bridges to folks in government uh, with other organizations to try to look at, you know, the, the interest that they have you know, just like this White House meeting. Um, so it's really great to see industry kind of converge on. There's a common set of tools and techniques uh, that we can all work together on. It benefits all of us. It lifts all boats uh, sincerely. Uh, and, you know, the, part of the role of the Linux Foundation is to play convener and facilitator for these kind of purposes. But I tell you, all the hard work uh, is being pulled in by the member organizations. And so um, with the broader open SSF, lots of different organizations pulling together with that, with uh, Alpha Omega, which is part of it. We're starting with seed funding from Google and Microsoft and really, you know, lead by example kind of leadership. Uh, but we're very eager to involve other, other organizations in helping fund this work so that we can expand the footprint, expand the number of projects that we can serve at both ends of the spectrum. Since you mentioned these members, I also understand that um, since Alpha Omega is part of, you know, OpenSSF project, um, uh, 
outside of the seed funding, what are the who are the companies who will be involved, or every member of OpenSSF they will be involved, or because with Linux Foundation the unique is that every project while they are part of Linux Foundation they have their own sovereignty, they they run their own governance the way they want it. So if you can talk about you know how things look like for Alpha Omega. So for Alpha Omega, just like other uh, OpenSSF projects, really every Linux Foundation project, there will be channels for engagement uh, that do not require payment, right? This is not a pay to play type of operation. Uh, we need volunteers to help us understand and define our approaches at either end of the spectrum. And particularly at the alpha side, you know, the, the more that we see uh, folks with a cybersecurity background, with a secure coding background, interested in helping volunteer, uh, for uh, to work with us to and go and engage those alpha projects, the better. Um, and even the scanning tools that we see using on the Omega side, even many of those will be open source. Uh, whenever there's software involved, that'll be open source software. Uh, I think actually engaging a broader community and helping us further develop those tools. Maybe there's even internal tools or proprietary tools that could be open sourced as a part of this. We're very eager to explore that. Uh, and then in terms of funding, uh, I, you know, we have... Uh, uh, Microsoft and Google participating for two and a half million dollars per year to make this work. Uh, we're very eager to find other organizations willing to put in at that amount um, uh, or larger. Uh, uh, we'll, ha we'll have other opportunities to fund perhaps more targeted work or fund at other levels, but we don't want to spend all of our life fundraising, you know, and this is expensive work because it's personnel heavy. Um, so we're really eager for those organizations that recognize <laughs> the importance of addressing this problem um, uh, to, to engage with them and allow us to, to, to uh, be able to get out there and actually have boots on the ground to, to make some of this stuff work. What kind of goals, you know, or what kind of roadmap you have set for yourself uh, when you, you know, when, when you sit down again next year that you're like, hey, this is what we were planning and this is what we have achieved? I, I, I think um, the Alpha Omega is an experiment. We are going to learn for the first six months. We are going to, um, we will do our best. We will get some things wrong. We will iterate and get better. Um, but we think it's important to move and to, and to try and to, and to do um, initially. So a year from now, we will be a lot smarter than we are today. Um, I'm expecting, you know, to have a, a, at least a reasonable small number of kind of alpha engagements completed that we'll, we'll be able to iterate on and learn from. Uh, for Omega, some of, because part of Omega is about building the system that does the analysis, getting that out first is, 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 you know, is, is pretty important. Uh, and then iterating and, 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 and going from there. So, um, you know, I, I don't want to try to plan too far out in advance because I'll be wrong. Um, but I, I know that we'll be, we'll be in a better place a year from now, um, at least in our ability to turn, you know, we'll, we'll have this machine. At least my, my hope is, my, my dream is that we have this machine that will turn dollars into better security assurance in, in open source. And the more dollars you put in, the more assurance we get out. Are you also working with other Linux Foundation projects also? Because, you know, in the end, you know, security is everybody's problem. It's a process, not a product. Well, frankly, every Linux Foundation project has uh, some piece of what they do that's focused on security. Some are able to actually resource um, things like third party audits and, uh, I, uh, you know, paid security staff and that kind of thing. Um, most aren't able to, to fully resource those kinds of things, but uh, I see this shifting a bit where the where the you know boards of those uh, projects and the, the of the of the stakeholders who help fund it will start to increase uh, their funding you know that they direct to, to that kind of thing. Uh, I, we've also talked internally about adoption of uh, many of the things coming out of OpenSSF, uh, you know, the best practices badge and, and security scorecards work, about the importance of multi-factor auth. Actually, I want to highlight that NPM uh, just announced that they're going to start requiring multi-factor auth for uh, their, their modules uh, uh, hosted in NPM for the developers who put it there to try to avoid account hijacking uh, issues and that kind of thing. So, uh, I, so we're starting to see more pickup of, of, of kind of these, these foundational baseline tools. Uh, the Linux Foundation as a whole has been behind this. I mean, you might've even remembered uh, when OpenSSL had its uh, Heartbleed issue, we went around and raised some money to try to uh, provide core funding for that staff and elevated them for, for, for quite a while to help get it to a, a better place, which we did. Uh, and we also invested quite a bit in the SBOM standard called SPDX. Uh, that's now an ISO standard. Uh, uh, but actually, and then I'll end with a whole lot of the inspiration for OpenSSF and a lot of the projects there came out of the Cloud Native Compute Foundation. 
and the security tag that's there. I'd say that project more than any other has been a leader in thinking about securing the, the software supply chain and building that natively into the tooling so that it's just how things work is you, you get greater assurances uh, uh, from, from A to A to Z. So uh, I, yeah, it's, it's an incredible collaboration internally at the LF, at the LF uh, and um, hopefully through Alpha Omega, we can bring that to uh, the broader open source ecosystem as well. Brian, Michael, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about Alpha Omega project and also talk about the wider problem that is there with security. Uh, thanks for those insights. And uh, I won't wait for the next February. I would love to have you folks back on the show before that. But thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd love to come back anytime.